Yo, what's happening guys? Welcome to your fifth CSS animation tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about the animation fill mode. Dogs. So in the last tutorial what we did was create this swanky Mario Kart scene whereby this dude drives from the left to the right but when he reaches the end of the road he just goes pop back to the beginning like he's Darren Brown doing a magic trick or something. Now we don't want that to happen, we want this to be a little bit more realistic at least and what I want to happen is for this dude to stay at the end when he reaches the end. So how can we do that? We do it using the animation fill mode property which basically tells CSS what to do with this dude or whichever element that we're animating outside of the animation window. So before it starts animating and after it. And it can take four values. The first one is none, which is the default one we're seeing right here. Forwards, backwards and both. So we're going to look at each one in turn. So currently none, it's saying do nothing outside the animation window. Once it's finished, return this dude to its original state, which is right here, Mario top minus 40 left zero get rid of these translates right here just do nothing right now we can change this to forwards and the way we do that is by saying animation fill mode and we change it to forwards like so and then if we refresh now you're going to notice that this dude is going to stay at the end of the animation when he reaches it pretty cool so that's more realistic so that's what forwards does it takes the last kind of properties here and it applies them to this element outside of the animation window at the end of it all right so that's good for making it stay at the end if you want it to we don't want it to pop back to the start now to demonstrate the next value backwards i just want to give this another property and that is animation delay and animation delay basically just delays the animation. So when you first load the page, if you want there to be a two second delay before the animation kicks in, then we just use that there, that animation delay, right? So let's save that and refresh and see what happens now. So it starts there, then it goes, okay? Pretty cool still, but say we want to start the animation from say 200 pixels. So not from the very start, but from round about here. Let's refresh and see what this does now. I'll just save it and there's the delay. Then it pops to 200 pixels again and it goes all the way over here. So we wanna get rid of that pop as well and we can control that via the animation fill mode too. And that's what backwards does. It does the opposite of forwards. It says, okay, well, whatever the starting animation uh, state is, I want you to apply that to the element before the animation kicks in, right? So let's try backwards. Let's say backwards like so. Save that, refresh. Now it's starting here, the delay starts, and then it goes to the end. But then we're getting that pop back to the end. So we've taken away forwards and that's no longer working. So we can combine them both, get them all in one shot by saying both. And that's gonna apply backwards and forwards to this animation. So if we refresh now, the backwards thing is kicking in, then the forwards thing is kicking in. So it's doing both in one go. So this is pretty cool, right? So that is what the animation fill mode is for. It decides what to do with the element outside of the animation window. If you have uh, any questions about this whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, don't forget to share, subscribe and like, and I'm gonna see you in the very next tutorial.